Good evening. I am doing this presentation in lieu of not being able to be in class today. Benjamin Britten, composer, pianist, conductor, and surprisingly, a criminal. Any guesses as to what his crime might have been? Well, if you guessed being a gay British man prior to 1967, you're today's winner. Britton had met the esteemed tenor Peter Pears after moving to London when showcasing one of his early pieces. Britton and Pears found in one another a both musical and romantic chemistry that never waned. Despite the illegality of homosexual acts in the UK prior to the Sexual Offenses Act of 1967, Britton and Pears made the collective decision to neither flaunt their relationship nor ignore it. Benjamin Britton as fearless of a romantic as he was a composer. Here I have a video of Britton and Pears performing an array of his arrangements, uh, with Britton playing the piano and Pears singing. You can see how the special con you can see the special connection that Britain and Pears had just by their musical chemistry together. I also wanted to show one more from this specific YouTube video because it's the most British thing I've ever seen. Third of these old English characters, the Lincoln The sound, anyway. When I was born a this in famous Lincolnshire, full well I served my master for more than seven years, till I took up to porting as you shall quickly hear. Oh, <clears throat> so you can see the special chemistry that they had, not only romantically, but also musically. They're almost able to act as one, because they understand each other so well. So, Britain was born in Lowestoft, Suffolk, in an eastern English fishing town. In November of 1913, excuse me. In November, of, in November of 1913, his mother was an amateur local musician, and his father acted as a dentist. Although his family was burdened with his mother's alcoholism and his father's distant personality, the mother made sure to preserve the family's social standing by throwing parties with musicians from the local area, which it was said were a sight to see. It is said that Britain may be one of the last composers raised primarily only on live music. His father had a strange disdain for music, and thus would not allow a gramophone or even a radio in the house. Though Britton was a lover of music and an eager student, the boarding school that Britton attended was not a happy place for him. He once noted in his diary that he had been contemplating suicide because of the torturous bullying he witnessed at school, as well as the indifference of the school's dreadful music master. Britton was spared from these unsavory conditions when he was awarded a composition scholarship to the Royal College of Music at age 17. Britain's first commercial work was, crea was creating music for the BBC documentary The King's Stamp, a highly acclaimed work for the young professional. His next two widely acclaimed works were A Thousand Gleaming Fires for tenor and strings, which he made alongside his then only platonic friend, Peter Pears. In 1940, at a time when the relationship between the two was anything but platonic, Britain composed seven sonnets of Michelangelo to be performed by Pears to the acclaim of audiences and critics alike. It was at this point the two had become lifelong lovers and creative partners. Britain produced countless more acclaimed works throughout his life until his untimely death from heart failure due to syphilis, which unfortunately was speculated to, he is speculated to have contracted from uh, his husband's infidelity in 1976. Britain's sonatas 
operas and his ability to put poems to music will forever be known as some of the influential skills of his era. And in class, I was going to play the Ballad of Lady Barnard in Little Musgrave. But you guys heard that in the listening, so it's a wonderful song. Thank you.